Today in the episode, Counter Meta, Rage Against the Machine, or How to Deal with Drones. Voice of the Wasteland. We decipher messages coming from the wastes and pick a craft from the exhibition. But we start with Workshop, the best involuntary space exploration program on a budget, the Toadfish. Can you hear that? Engines howling, the sound of metal grinding against metal, the encroaching feeling of impending doom, that's just some happy memories of the update 0.11.30, Raven's Path. That's when the acolytes of the Black Bird brought the most unusual crossbow to the wastes, the toadfish. But wait, it's rather bulky, weighs more than the executioner, has a slow reload, is not very sturdy. You must be joking! Nope. Actually, this very crossbow is one of the best torture devices available in the wastes. And that's not even because you get to make two shots for the cost of one. What really makes the toadfish amazing is the weapon's perk. If your first bolt, is it okay to call it a bolt if it's a huge bloody metal rod? Okay, if you say so. So, if your first bolt hits the target, the impulse from the hit of the second bolt increases significantly. Impulse isn't the most important thing in the world, right? Wouldn't it be better to have some resistance to something instead, or simply more damage? Well, try it yourselves. See, it is pretty damn useful, especially when used against vehicles that don't touch the ground. Yeah, yeah, we're speaking about all those pesky flyers. If you run into one of those, feel free to give them a friendly push with your bolts, sending them right into the stratosphere. That's almost heaven, right? Before you do that, though, let's see what you need to build to make the toadfish shine. In no particular order, ammo, an engine helping with our reload speed, a cabin with a helpful perk like the Omnibox or the Echo, and also a platform that is maneuverable, or at least fast. Finish that up with some camouflage, and that's basically it. All the other parts are up to you. By the way, Starting with this very episode, we are going to upload blueprints for our vehicles to the exhibition, just as you requested. Take them, test them, or modify them in any way you see fit. The name of our official account and the name of the build are on the screen right now. Now that our vehicle's ready, let's discuss a few things you need to know to use the Toadfish effectively. First, it doesn't matter who you hit with the first shot. The second bolt is still gonna have that sweet impulse increase. In practice, that means that you don't have to aim for that damn hover or a wedge from the get-go. Score a hit on literally anyone, and then send your present to the intended target. Second, consider the acceleration vector. And we're not talking about your own acceleration. It's all about the parts of the vehicle you need to hit to send the enemy in a specific direction. Want to flip an enemy over? Hit the upper side of their hull. Want to make them spin? Land a shot at one of the corners. Finally, if you want to be able to make any use of the previous two pieces of advice and send your enemies tumbling in a controlled fashion, you need to be confident in your ability to land shots with the Toadfish. Practice makes perfect. While in combat, stay away from the heat. Try to be on top of things by being extra vigilant. Get rid of dangerous opponents first and fulfill people's childhood dreams by making them fly. Conquering the skies one vehicle at a time. What can be better than a battle car? Two battle cars, obviously. And what is better than having two of those? Damn right, it's having a horde of drones. These tiny, dangerous, almost sentient bots can be found at almost any PS. But lately, we see a flood of drone builds in high stakes battles at the highest power scores, the home of the fiercest survivors of them all. What made these tiny Terminators so popular? First of all, when you go all drones, you're very free when it comes to traversing the battlefield. It's basically all about releasing your little bringers of death saying, I'll be back and then going elsewhere. Secondly, in a sense, drone cars are considerably easier to build. For example, you don't even have to tackle the ever-present conundrum of how to cover my guns in armor while still having at least some elevation. Finally, drone builds allow for some extreme aesthetics. You can make it look like anything even like a drone, without affecting its combat capabilities. Okay, 
That's clear. But what if I don't want to be an obedient slave to Skynet? What if I want to punish the damn machines with impunity? Well, there are a few things you can do. First and foremost, help your allies. Not every craft in your team has effective means of defense against mechanical pests. By helping your teammates, you greatly increase your team's chances of success. Who knows, maybe the guy you're defending now will save you from a wedge a few seconds later. Second, take away what makes them strong. In most cases, the reason for their success is their superior mobility. So shoot at their wheels, tracks, or whatever they have. An immobilized drone carrier is a dead drone carrier. There are also drone builds with Goliaths, and they are a different story. If you encounter these, just keep your distance, or flip them over any way you can. Third, if there's only one enemy left and it's a drone craft, team up and go capture the point. It's something that we see a lot of when players on a winning team waste their time trying to chase a single opponent that goes invisible every few seconds, and he or she eventually wins simply because his dead mates were more successful in capturing the zone earlier in the match. That's infuriating. Don't let that happen. Fourth, get your priorities right. If you're fighting one-on-one, -on -one, get rid of the drones first, and only then attack the carrier. Obviously, that won't be easy advice to follow in some situations. For instance, if you're armed with high-caliber cannons or missiles. In this case, target the carrier, or more specifically, the spots where its drone modules are stored. If you destroy the module, the corresponding drone goes offline as well. Another good thing is that drone builds are often chock full of things like the Genesis, fuel barrels, or generators, so you will hit them as well. Finally, know your enemy. In most cases, meta-worthy builds are pretty much the same. They're built for a specific purpose in a very specific way, meaning that they all share certain weaknesses as well. Knowing these weaknesses is key to your survival. And now, a short commercial break. What makes a more pleasant sound? The Punisher ejecting an endless stream of shell casings or a clarinet TW mid-flight. Cast your votes and choose the winners of this year's Wasteland Music Awards. Psycho Beat songs are nominated in a different category. The first question comes from Daniel Nunez. Can you make night maps a lot darker so that headlights on cabs can be utilized? Hey Daniel, we experiment with lighting a lot, but currently we have no plans to make night maps any darker. Also, please remember that as we develop the game for millions of players and almost any kind of change in the graphics department affects performance a lot, we always have to think about those of you playing on weaker hardware. So we tend to tread really carefully. Anyway, if there's any kind of a visual upgrade planned for the game, we always talk about it in our dev vlogs, so keep your eyes peeled. Patrick Spear writes, Would it be possible to add some kind of voting system at the end of a match where every player votes for the best looking craft and the winner gets a bonus reward, like extra scrap or XP? This way the game could involve builders a lot more. This is a very interesting suggestion, Patrick. Obviously, I can't promise anything but we passed your message on to the dev team. Then there's a question from a survivor that goes by the name of 4Neutro. Will there be any part or weapon that allows you to heal your teams? My idea is to create the best support vehicle. Hey Neutro, we actually considered different ways that we can implement in-field repairs into the game. The big problem though is that it will drastically change the way the game is played. For example, resulting in considerably longer matches. So at least for now, when it comes to this mechanic, any work is on hold. At the same time, we're really interested in exploring the possibilities of other types of support-oriented modules. As you're probably aware, we have a module that works as a force field generator. And with the Doomsday Cars update, we also introduced a special Dawn's Children cabin that can create an energy shield in front of it. The last message was sent by the survivor known as the Quarantiner. Hey. Can y'all capture the radio station near my base? I keep trying to watch y'all's show, but I have to drive outside my turf to even hear it. We're sorry to hear that, mate. We will schedule a raid ASAP. Did you hear that, boys? Get ready to roll. But before we go to blow things up, let's do the last segment of our show. Ugh, my favorite. Every episode, we choose a single blueprint from the exhibition and try to find words to describe how amazing it is. No, really, given our job, one would expect us to get used to seeing cool new designs on the exhibition week after week, but no, we're still impressed every single time. 
Today, we wanna to show you this little beast, the Verzilla 33, made by the master engineer Reaper 201. It's pretty, yeah, pretty enough to be featured on the cover of a magazine, if we had those, that is, but it also performs really well in the field when you're riding it to, let's say, capture a hostile radio station. Just be careful while making sharp turns at top speed. Our Verzilla overturned once or twice. Maybe that just means that we should be more careful when driving. It's an excellent battle car anyway. Thank you, Reaper. That's it for today. Tell us what you think in the comments below. Ask us questions. And if we survive the test run on our newest vehicle built entirely of explosive barrels, we'll answer some of them in our next episode. Subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and good luck.